What's going on guys? In today's video, we're going to be learning about memory leaks in iOS. We're going to walk through an actual example, leaks of memory, and more importantly, we're going to learn how to diagnose and fix memory leaks. So without further ado, start by dropping a like down below. Let's open up Xcode and let's get started by creating a new project. We're going to stick with iOS, the app template. We'll go ahead and call this super creatively memory leaks. We're going to stick with uh, Swift, of course, and storyboard for our UI. We're not doing any UI today this applies in swift ui as well but we'll just go ahead and stick with that let's go ahead and get started let me go and expand my xcode window here i'll choose a simulator maybe we'll go with the 13 pro max since i believe that's the one i've got booted up here looks like it's just the 13 pro so let me actually go and select the 13 Pro instead. Let's give our app a run. So first and foremost, a memory leak is caused, as the name implies, when you leak memory and it's not cleaned up and deallocated when you're done using an object in your uh, program. So it can be caused by a variety of uh, symptoms, but most commonly, two objects strongly retain each other, hence the difference between strong and weak pointers. I've got a dedicated video on that. If you're not familiar, I'll link it in the description down below. I encourage you to watch it to get up to speed. So what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to create a memory leak uh, by basically going to another controller and retaining a view uh, in a strong capacity. So we're gonna go ahead and first and foremost create a button here in our first controller. Now of course I wanna go through this to actually illustrate a memory leak and then diagnose it using instruments. So we're gonna go ahead and create a button. It's gonna say tap me, super creative. Also go ahead and set a frame on this guy, 00, 200 and perhaps 50. And we're going to go ahead and say button.center is view.center. If we go ahead and give that a run, we should see our button there. And when we tap on the button, we want to go ahead and handle the interaction. So let's go ahead and say button, add target. Whoops, let's try that one more time. Add target, self, and the selector is this guy for touch up inside. Now bear with me, we're gonna go do a little bit more setup code and then we'll get to the memory leak. So we're gonna create a second view controller and override view to load. And I'm intentionally going through this piece quickly so I don't bore everyone who has to sit and watch me set stuff up. We'll go ahead and create this here and we're gonna go ahead and say present VC animated will be true. Now inside of this controller, maybe we'll set a different background color so we can actually see it be presented. We go ahead and tap this button and there's our red controller. Now to actually cause a memory leak, we'll go ahead and create a view. Maybe we'll call it my view. It'll inherit from UI view. And let's say this guy takes in a UI view controller when it is created. So essentially we're gonna pass it into the constructor. We'll say self.vc is vc, and then we're gonna bring in the other required initializer. We'll also go ahead on here and say var, and we'll say my view will be type of my view. And when this view, this red second view is created, we're gonna go ahead and create an instance of my view and passing in self for the vc parameter. Let's see what's going on here. We need the super init. So we'll say super init with frame, a size of zero. Go ahead and give it a run. And once again, we'll go to our red screen. However, the way we've set up our code now, we're actually causing a leak. Now let me explain the leak before we look at it in instruments. So essentially, we've got our first controller, our first screen here, not a whole lot going on. We create a button and present our second screen or second controller. When our second controller is loaded, we go ahead and instantiate my view, passing in self as the VC view controller parameter, and we hang on to it with this local property here. Now, inside of my view, we have this property that is set via the initializer, and we are passing in uh, the VC from which we instantiate the view. Now the problem here is every time we create the second screen and dismiss it, we actually can't get rid of the objects and clean it up. And the reason for that is 
the my view is holding on to the view controller second vc because we're passing it in and second vc is holding on to my view so we have a retain cycle so let's go ahead and actually diagnose this so how do we go ahead and diagnose memory leaks this is a super super important skill for any ios developer so what we want to go ahead and do is open up something that comes with xcode and it is called instruments now instruments gives you a bunch of templates and tools to diagnose and drill down into a lot of data, things like threads, network, disk reads and writes. And there's a handy tool in here, super creatively called memory leaks. If I can go ahead and actually find it, let's see where it is. Ah, it's just called leaks. In fact, so let's go ahead and open this up. And once you open up leaks, you're going to see two templates on the left here. One is for allocations when objects are instantiated and the other is leaks. So what we want to go ahead and do here is select your simulator. And in the drop down here, we want to select the project that we are working with, which is memory leaks. This is what we called it here. And what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to hit the record button. And you'll notice when we hit the record button, it'll actually go ahead and launch our app. And you can take a look at the timeline that's being created here. So we'll go ahead and create this second VC. And then we're going to wait a couple seconds and we're going to go ahead and dismiss second VC. And you can see that a couple of things are happening here. We have allocated memory, but when our second view controller, the red screen was dismissed, this memory wasn't released. In fact, the reason it wasn't released is we've leaked it. There was a retain cycle, so the system wasn't able to clean it up. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is now hit pause on this recording. And what you'll notice in the leaks section down here, if I go and hover over this little icon right here, you're going to notice it says we have some leaks. Sometimes a tooltip pops up, sometimes it doesn't. Let's see if it decides to do its job. So let me go ahead and select this. So we have our leaks check here. And here we have it. We have four new leaks. So how do we actually find out what the heck is leaking? So there's another place where we can actually visually see the memory graph in our application. So I'm going to go ahead and give this a run one more time. And in this toolbar right above our console here, there is a button that kind of looks like the share button. And we're going to go ahead and click on this. And what this essentially opens up is a visual representation of our uh, actual memory graph. On the left, we'll see various objects and we can select them and see the things that uh, that object is referencing. So if I go ahead and hit this guy, let me go ahead and hit the play button here to resume our application run. We'll hit this and it'll open up the red screen and we'll go ahead and dismiss it. Now, in theory, we should have deallocated the second view controller. Let's go ahead and hit this to see our uh, object graph in memory. And on the left-hand side here, you'll see some interesting stuff. The most interesting thing that you'll see is we still see our second VC. So something's not going on quite right. So if we select second VC, we'll see that uh, there are some relationships here. But let's take a step back. Let's actually go to our view controller. And in one of these views, we'll actually see that second VC is still alive. And more important, that second VC is being connected to my view and my view uh, is strongly retaining second VC. In other words, there's a retain cycle. Two things are strongly pointing to one another. I feel like I've said retain cycles 10 times at this point in this video. But anyways, this is how you're going to diagnose it. The other interesting thing that I want to point out, which is sometimes helpful when evaluating memory consumption in your application, is when you give your app a run and you click on this icon at the left on the left panel here and click memory, you'll see a time lapse as your application is running and the amount of memory that is being used. So if I go ahead and click on this, you'll see that our memory is going to slightly increase. We went from 57 to roughly 59 MB. When I go ahead and dismiss this controller, in theory, we should have released all that memory and we should go down. But in reality, what you'll notice has happened here is we didn't release any memory. So let's go ahead and actually fix this memory leak and we'll give everything a run once more and see things in action. So how do we fix this leak? Well, the simplest way to fix it is by making this guy, this property in my view, a weak reference property. 
Now what that's gonna do is this weak instance is going to allow the view controller to be deallocated and nulled out at the time of dismissal with second VC. Now one thing you'll notice is it's gonna yell at me, we're gonna to need to make this optional just like that. Even though this argument is non-optional, this should be good enough. Now this needs to be var, I deleted it accidentally there. And let's go ahead and give this a run. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit command R, we're going to go ahead and once again click into our memory inspector right here and we see that we're flatlining it about 57.4.5. We'll go ahead and hit this to get our red screen to pop up. Of course our memory went up and we'll sit here for a second or two and then I'll go ahead and swipe it away, dismiss it. Now we should see that memory flatten out again. Now sometimes using this is not really the best empirical data points in terms of memory leaks. The instruments is what's really helpful, but other than the instruments, we can go ahead and actually click on that little share icon uh, down here once again, and we'll see that we don't see second VC or my view here. Now that it's dismissed, we only see view controller. However, if I go ahead and hit resume here, let's go ahead and hit this. Our red second VC is allocated and in memory, let's go ahead and hit this icon, and we should see it on the left here. We see second VC and we see my view. If you go ahead and hit my view, you'll see that my view has a reference back to second VC. You'll see that view controller is hanging on to this guy and this second VC is hanging on to my view, just like that. Now, if I go ahead and hit play one more here to resume our app and dismiss it, and one final time, we'll hit this icon for the visual memory graph. You'll see the second VC in my view are now gone. And let me go ahead and just collapse this stuff down here to actually focus on what we care about, which is the upper three nodes here. And that's basically debugging retain cycles and memory leaks in a nutshell. Now, one last thing before we conclude, debugging memory leaks can be a very, very in-depth topic actually working in instruments and figuring out what is leaking, why it's leaking, and where memory needs to be cleaned up is not always as simple as weak and strong properties. Sometimes you have various cues doing various work, and there could be leaks in different objects caused by different cues. There could be race conditions that are causing leaks. My point being is, Leaks are much more complex than what we've gone over in this video, and if you're interested, definitely leave a comment and let me know what your questions are, and I'd be more than happy to make more videos on this topic. If you haven't done so already, drop a like down below, hit subscribe if you're new to the channel and into iOS. Thanks again for watching, I'll catch you on the next one.